All right, this week we're gonna stay with the streamers and we're going with Kelly Gallup's Big Hole Bug. Uh, it's one obviously he did for the Big Hole River down there in southwest Montana. Uh, phenomenal river if y'all ever get a chance to go out there and fish it. It's a good one for sure. Um, another articulated pattern. We'll go ahead and get right into the tying here. Uh, he started the original on this one was a TMC 8089 for the back hook. Uh, I'm substituting because I don't have that style or I don't have that hook here. I'm going to substitute and go with a Gami B10S. This is a size six. It's probably a little bit bigger than what Kelly used originally, but. And this is the closest thing that I had, so this is what we're going to go with. But the original one, I'll have it in the material list as I do for all the videos, was a TMC 8089 size 12. And so we're going to take our thread right to the point of the hook here. Usually with the, you know, the um, 2461s, we'll go back to the barb of the hook where it starts the ascent. We're just going to go right here in the front. Uh, right in the front of the hook for this 889 and you could actually even advance that forward just a little bit if you wanted to but just for my reference this is how I typically tie these is right off the point of this hook so that's what we'll stick with on this but if you want feel free to move it forward a little bit because we're going to have a lot of all the back part portion is is marabou so I mean it's very easy to cover up everything all right so we're going to go probably one and a half times the length of the hook and this is just yellow marabou right on the top here and then i just have a brown thread this is a brown six aught so we're going to go ahead and tie this tail in right at the point of our hook and then i'm going to grab two strands of copper flashaboo Make sure that's two, looks like it. And then cut that in half. Lost a piece. There we go. Cut that in half and then just lay this, just some internal flesh. Half on my side, half on the camera side. Flip that around and give that a quick tug and there we go. Now, as always when you're working with this marabou, just advance this stuff forward just slightly. We'll take it to our halfway point where we're going to tie in our next stacks. And we're going to go with some brown. Now, for, for this pattern, it makes the back portion look so much better if you start with, you know, just your regular marabou for your tail, you know, your nice straight thin stuff. And then as you progress to the front of the hook, get the absolute wispiest stuff that you can find. It just fills out the profile a lot better. It makes the fly look better, in my opinion, if you get the wispiest stuff that you can find. So we're just going to throw this right on top. Flashaboo kind of got a little funky on me there, but I'm going to let it be. If I have to, I'll just cut a piece of it out if it doesn't want to cooperate. I'll show him. <laughs> so... Just advance this, like I said, to your halfway point. We're not putting any body material down. If you want to, you can throw some zap on there. Yeah, that thing's not making the cut. Get out of there. If you want, you can throw some zap on there, but I would advise against it just because it'll wind up uh, when you throw your subsequent uh, pieces of marabou on, it'll wind up wanting to stick and not really. It, it'll just be a pain. So, not really necessary to throw any glue down on that thread. 
So like I said with this, we're going to start going with the wispier pieces. Here's one that I have for yellow. Um, you can get away with not having the wispiest pieces in your yellow, but just because it stands out, it seems like that stuff fills out a little bit better. But certainly for your brown, you want the... It's, it's almost on the borderline of being unusable, quite honestly. And then I'm just going to take this back probably to the three-quarter point. And if you want with this one, you can advance all the way to the front and double up one on each side, top and bottom, so you wind up with four stacks. The biggest thing is, is just make sure you fill this out and you're not able to see your body material or your, your thread, essentially. I mean, if you can see a little bit of it, it's not really going to hurt. But, like I said, you, you do want this back portion really full. Adds to the swim a lot as well. That nice wispy marabou. Adds to the motion on the tail. So now here's where we're going to get really selective on this brown. And I'm going to pick both pieces out that I want to use right now. I have a backup pack just in case I can't find something that I want to use here. So bear with me for a second. But like I said, this is a critical portion of this fly. So I feel that it's I feel that it's necessary to go through and take the time and explain this and that way you guys are able to see exactly what we're after here. That one's close. That one's garbage that'll never get used to the trash. Oh, that would have been a good one, but it's not full. Okay, so here will be Oh boy. Who would ever guess looking for a junk plume of marabou would be such a difficult task here. And that one I can make work for my second piece if I can't find anything better. But we're going to the backup pack. Going to the backup. Let's see if we can't find something a little wispier. There's a good one right out of the gate. Oh, let's see here. There we go. That's what we're after. See how nice and wispy and it, like I said, it's almost a junk feather, but it fills out so much better than using these nice, clean, straight plumes that we typically use for streamers. Here's another decent one. Less bulk on it, too. Um... Let me make sure that I'm not missing a good one here. What about you? There we go. That one looks decent too. It's nice and wispy. We'll use this one for our second. I have just a mess of marabou on the, on the bench now. After I just chewed up a minute and a half, two minutes of video searching for one. <laughs> Thanks for staying with me there. I'm sure that was highly entertaining. So we're just going to throw this right over top and to the three-quarter point yet again. Just tie this in, get it secured. Take it right back where you left off with your yellow. And then I'm just going to bring this right to the front, leaving myself a little bit of room because we're still going to get two good stacks in here. So now with these, I lay these almost completely over all the way to the back. It just helps fill out the just helps fill out the fly. And boy oh boy. Never struggle with finding subpar marabou, but they did it right on this pack. They gave me a good one. It's all usable. So, I'm just going to use a little bit extra on this yellow. It's not the wispiest one that I want, but like I said, you can get away with using a more sparse yellow piece than you can with the brown. 
and then I'm just going to measure this out and like I said it's going to go almost the entire way back it's covering everything up just add more bulk it's all we're after so there we go and if you have to if you have a real sparse yellow and I'm kind of right on the borderline of that right now I'd like that to be a little a little thicker but I'm gonna omit it if you want to and all you have is a really sparse marabou go ahead and put down two stacks just do one on each side on the bottom and you'll be fine so this brown is nice and thick here this is what we're after this is the nice wispy stuff the stem isn't too awful rigid I mean it's close uh, you can't really see too well there on that stem I mean it's it's a little thicker than what I would like, but we're really not using much of that portion. The majority of that is going to be in the section that we cut off. And like I said, I'm just going to flip this the whole way back. It's going almost the entire way back. And like I was saying, you can, by all means, just tie the two in at the front. But I like tying them in in the middle because I feel like it gives this one a prop so it won't lay down flat all the way. So I like doing this. I like doing this on this pattern. And I'll say it again, the more bulk you can get in this back section, the better. And then we'll just go ahead and tie this off. So I'll give it one more. Got a little sloppy there. Speaking of sloppy, wait till you see, wait till I zoom out and you see all this chaos going on on the bench. But there we go. There's the back portion of the big hole bug. You can see it's nice and filled out. It's nice and thick. Um, it's just going to add to the motion on this fly. The tail is where you get the majority of your, your action on this pattern. So we're going to go ahead and set that down. Then we're going to go with our front hook, which is a Dairiki 710. Um, you know, it's got the it's a 4X long. Uh, no, 3X long, sorry. 3X long, and it's got the down eye. This is a size 2. And I'm going to get my thread started here. I'm back to the gel spun 100 now. And get the thread started, grab our bead, and we'll get this back hook tied in. lines up looks good shorten up my connection just slightly and then go ahead and tie this all down get this section in get a couple good solid wraps on this wire as I come to the back, now we're going to tie in the skirt. Now for the skirt on this one, we're just going with the wispy brown marabou. Two down the side, one over the top. And as you can see, right where the barb starts its ascent, that's where we have our, wire, our thread setting. So I'm just going to find some good wispy marabou here. And this section where it's discolored I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that on the bottom I'm not going to use that portion and that one's kind of discolored on the left side so flip it over and we'll use this other one so I'm just going to take these sections right here and probably halfway back I'm just going to make a quick pull 
and I'll explain it better on the best one. I was probably out of the frame there, but I'll explain it a little bit better. I'm just going to lay these right down the side. One on my side. That one's secured. Let's get something good here. Okay, so this bottom section, that marabou, those feathers are almost always going to be useless. So just get rid of those, get to where you have your full color. And then I'm going to hold this in my hand. I'll explain this a little bit better. If you try and use all this stuff right here, I mean, it'll cover up and it'll, it'll cover up your connection, but it's going to look pretty sparse and you're going to need more materials. Just do a quick pull like that. This is the stuff. It's just a little, little thicker. It just covers up your connection a little bit better. So I'm going to lay that past the bead going into the front section of marabou that I tied in for the tail. There's that and then I'm going to get one more piece and I'm going to set this right over the top. Now with this I'm using the wispy tips because I want it to I want it to merge into the back portion on the tail. I want a nice little seamless connection there. Just kind of spread those out. There we go. The color's off a little bit. This one's a little bit darker of a brown, but I don't think that's going to be the end of the world. So now I'm going to take all of this stuff and right where I left off, you can't see it obviously on because it's on my side but right where I left off with my wire when I tied it back in is where I'm going to trim that and then it's going to have a nice seamless transition here nice smooth taper I got a little bit of a bump because I got a little carried away with the marabou on that skirt but I wanted it I wanted a nice clean cover now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some brass wire and this is just small small wire you can go with brassy if you want what I will say when you're working with this front portion of this fly use longer materials use the longest material you can find grab some extra wire throw it on here it'll save you in the long run and it'll make sense here as I start tying this front portion. Okay, get your wire tied in, bring this back around, hook your wire, tie that in, that way it's not going to slip out on you, and get this out of your way for now. I probably got a little bit too long on that one, but that's alright. That'll be the last thing that we tie in. Now we're going to go with two sets of rubber legs, one in the back section, one in the front. And I'll show you here once I get this picked out. Uh, where are we at there? So we're going to go two sets of two. Oh, come on. Stuff's sticky. Come on. There we go. Now, I'm going to cut this and I'm not ripping these. And I'll explain why here in a second. I want the... I want these to stay together. These two here, you can see how that rubber portion connects the two. I want those. I don't want singles like this stuff right here. Like these, you know, see where they're not connected on the one end. I don't want that because it is a pain in the ass to work all your material through here. So keep them connected. Keep them connected until the very end. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, a figure eight right over top of these legs. Go one wrap, two wraps, pull them tight. You can see they're hanging down, they're nice and straight, everything's even. 
and then we're going to advance to right behind the eye. Same thing, we're going to take a section of tube, keep them connected. It makes life so much easier when you start winding all this material through there. Quick trim. And it looks like that one's going to stay. It's just hanging on by a thread, so I'm going to pick two new ones. Take the extra time right now because it'll save you a ton of frustration later on through this fly. Son of a... Speaking of frustration... One, and... As long as this one works out, we'll maybe get close to working on the front half of this. Alright. Just hold hold together for me there. So we're going to throw this one in. One, two, make your figure eight right over the top. Pull that down nice and tight. Everything's hanging down nice and straight for us. You can see how these are setting in for us. Everything looks good. Now what I'm going to do is just with my GSP, I'm going to make one or two extra wraps just to give my lead eyes a little more security. And then I'm going to work my way through. Coming right back. Sometimes weaving in and out of this can be a little tricky, but we'll make it. Okay, I should have tied this in beforehand and then I wouldn't have to go through twice once with my thread and another time with my body material. But this is just root beer, uh, medium astaz. I'm going to pick this off to where I'm just tying in the nylon, just tying in the, her cotton, whatever the heck it is. I'm catching a little bit of a staz. Not too bad. Not too bad. This just reduces bulk at your tie-in point. And then I'm going to take this to the front. Get those legs out of the way. Bring that right there. Okay, so... Typically, I don't cut this astaz, but because using the rotary function is not an option on this on this one, I'm winding it by hand, and I, I won't keep it on the card, so there will be a little bit of waste on this, but you can always use it on another fly somewhere else. So we're just going to start wrapping this, and the same thing as always when you're working with this astaz, you know, get about three to four good wraps in and then just anchor your material. Pick your legs out and then tie right in front of them. See when I get done wrapping that, they're still hanging down nice and straight. I didn't interfere with how their orientation at all. Now this is where working with the longer material helps out a lot because you can grab it below the legs and it won't have a tendency you won't have a tendency to catch the legs with your with your fingers when you're wrapping this let me see here I'm gonna bring this back that looks pretty good get one wrap right in front of the legs get back here it takes a little bit of time to weave through these um, takes a little bit of time, but it's not too awful bad. It's nothing that's not manageable. Okay, and then we're going to figure eight right around our dumbbell eyes, just like the circus peanut. Come right in front and then get one. I might be able to get one more. I don't want to rush that though. Um, 
Yeah, I think that'll work right there. So we'll fill out this head. Go ahead and tie off your staz. We'll get this out of the way. And we're good. Peel some of this back. Just make a couple of nice clean wraps there. And then the last material that we're going to tie in is just a sculpin olive uh, strung hackle. Strung saddle. All I got to say about working with the longest materials possible, go through here and find the absolute longest feather that you can work with. This looks pretty good. If you try and work with something short on this, one, you're going to get frustrated trying to weave through all of this, and two, by the time you get to the back, you may not have any hackle left. And you'll see with this one, I'll probably cut it pretty close. By the time I get to the back, so I'm going to tie this in, get that good and secure. Then I'm going to grab my hackle pliers and then, where did I put it? Just a regular old hair clip for now. Get off that hook. And I'm going to take this and just peel this back. I'm talking with hackle pliers in my mouth. I'm sure that was clear as mud. But I'm just going to peel that back and then I'm going to wrap, start wrapping my hackle. Get the first nice full one, get a second full one right next to it, and then start working your way through. I'm going to go right, and I didn't like how that wrap set there. That's a little better. I'm going to go right in front of the eyes, cross over, and then right behind the eyes, and then continue making my way to the back. See how I'm already starting to get pretty short on this, on this hackle, and I have a decent ways to go here. So I'm going to make some, get out of the way. I'm just going to spread these wraps out as I start coming back. I'm going to have to re-grab this because I'm starting to get short. Don't pull on this too much or I'll wind up, I'll wind up losing all of it. And there we go. We're pretty close. I'm going to grab my wire now and I'm going to counter wrap this. Oh boy, this is really long. I'm going to counter wrap this, capture your hackle. And then same thing, just start working your way through all the way to the front. And this is where it's important to have this longer, longer material. As you can see, my hands are out of the way. I'm not worrying about trapping those legs. And let me get one more wrap right in front of the eye. Make sure everything's captured. We're good to go. Go ahead and peel this stuff back. Cut off our wire. Oh, where are you at? There. There we go. Now just kind of throw this, hold your hackle back, and it's just going to kind of flow to the back as you tie your next couple of wraps in. I'm go ahead and whip finish this. One more. Where's 
my marker buried under all of this stuff. Here we go. Just touch up our thread. It's just a brown. You can use olive, black, whatever. Just dull down that white. And then the next last thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our legs. Give it a pull, let go, and then a trim. Pull, let go, and then trim. There you have it. There's Kelly Gallup's big hole bug. Probably could have got these back legs back a little bit further, but I kind of like where they're at. They're sitting pretty good. But that is the finished product. Um, as always, any questions or comments, leave them with me. I told you I had a mess here on the bench. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next fly.